The internet is littered with people raving about the benefits of cold showers. It's changed some people's lives. A cold shower that changed everything. Been cold showering for a few months, I've definitely got lean. Cold showers saved me from my depression. Cold showers apparently killed my allergies. My showers are now hovering around 45 to 46 degrees and it burns the skin. Others would rather die than step foot near even a lukewarm shower. This bro science thing destroyed my life. First cold shower ruined my day. Don't care, I'm taking a hot shower. I just can't do a cold shower. Don't do it, it gives you a high fever. It ruined my mood, which makes a bad start to my day. So I decided to truly find out for myself cold or hot showers. For the first 30 days, I'd be taking hot showers every single morning. And I mean damn hot. There was no rules on how long or what time of day. It was lovely. Who doesn't love a hot shower? Until you have to get out, that is. For the second 30 days, I would be taking cold showers every single morning. To be honest, I was dreading it a little bit. No rules again on how long or what time of day. How do people stay in here long enough to wash themselves? No starting hot, no slowly easing into it, no half-half, no starting a toe at a time. If I truly wanted to gauge the benefits of a cold shower, it was all or nothing. During this period, I spent countless hours looking at clinical trials and studies that have been done on cold versus hot showers. I've compiled my findings from this research and my own learnings from this 30-day experience into a list of the top benefits and drawbacks to each shower type to help you make a science-based decision on how far you crank that temperature dial. So let's look at hot showers and some of the benefits. Number one, hot showers have actually been shown to improve your overall well-being. According to a randomized controlled trial involving 38 people that were split into two groups, group one took hot baths in 40 degree water every day for 10 minutes. Group two took hot showers in 40 degrees every day for 10 minutes. The groups then switched and did the opposite for the next two weeks. The subjects reported lower stress, tension anxiety, anger hostility, and depression dejection. Physically, the subjects reported better skin, lower fatigue, and a better overall health. Number two, hot showers can actually improve your sleep. A meta-analysis study conducted after a search across over 5,222 different articles showed that the best time to take a hot shower was between one to two hours before you go to bed and that the shower should be no longer than 10 minutes in duration. The hot shower helps to increase blood flow throughout the body, which then helps to reduce your core body temperature after the shower. This core body temperature decline is a core mechanism in falling asleep. And this is also why hot showers are far more effective for cooling off in a hot climate. Number three, hot showers are generally just a pleasant experience. I used to look forward to them. They're the path of least resistance to get yourself nice and clean. Now let's look at some of the cons of taking a hot shower as opposed to a cold shower. Number one, there's some research indicating that taking hot showers may negatively affect muscle growth. These findings come from a study that looked at six people who were matched for strength levels and were assigned to two different groups. One group received hot water immersion while the other went with passive recovery after a session of lifting. They did 10 weeks of leg day, two days a week. And after each workout, they either spent 10 minutes in hot water immersion at 45 degrees Celsius, or they underwent normal recovery. They then used DXA and magnetic resonance imaging to measure the muscle mass it was found that muscle mass was actually less after this 10 minute immersion in hot water. This hot water can actually reduce the inflammation in the muscles a little bit too much. And some level of inflammation is necessary for the muscles to adapt. In terms of my own personal experience here, I was going to the gym three times a week throughout my period of taking hot showers. And I must say, I didn't notice any difference whatsoever in muscle man mass or strength in any way. The second drawback of taking hot showers is they're actually bad for your skin. Unfortunately, the hotter you turn that temperature dial, the more oil and moisture is lost from your skin, which is especially damaging to people with chronic conditions such as eczema. Hot showers can make people itchier because they cause cells in your skin to release histamine, which is involved in the inflammatory response. Hot showers remove sebum off your skin, the natural barrier that protects it and you from the external elements, such as weather and products. And this is why hot showers can actually worsen the appearance of acne on the skin. Drawback number three of taking hot showers. Hot showers can actually be damaging to your hair. The epidermis on the scalp has an outside fatty lipid layer for protection. This helps to keep germs out and keep water in. Hot water can wash away this outside fatty layer, leaving your hair dry and more prone to damage. According to respected dermatologist, Dr. Pilang, 
hot water will not directly cause hair loss, but it can negatively affect the health of your scalp. But if you continuously do it, the weaker strands may start to break off. These effects are most prominent, however, in really hot showers and are not such an issue if you keep your water temperature reasonable. Personally, I kept my hot showers at a reasonable temperature. They say if you keep it under 40 degrees Celsius, you won't have any of these problems. So we've had a look at some of the benefits and some of the drawbacks of hot showers. But what about the dreaded cold shower? Well, cold showers have actually been shown to reduce sickness days. A study looked at 3,018 participants in the Netherlands aged between 18 and 65, and they all had no experience with regular cold showers. For 30 consecutive days, they were either in the control group taking normal hot showers, or a group taking hot showers followed by a cold shower for between 30 and 90 seconds. And they found that these hot to cold showers resulted in a 29% reduction in self-reported sick leave from work, compared to the people that took hot showers. And when you asked all of these people what the biggest benefit they found was, they said it was an increase in perceived energy levels. Many reported it being similar to the effects of that cup of coffee in the morning. 91% of these participants reported the will to continue such a routine, and 64% of them actually did, despite all of them admitting it was very uncomfortable, which is perhaps the biggest indicator of a health or work benefit to taking these showers. Shockingly enough, one participant in the 90-second cold shower group actually died unexpectedly of a chronic pulmonary embolism 56 days after the trial finished. But don't let that put you off. Benefit number two of cold showers. They help you build mental resilience, discipline, and momentum in your day. Cold showers suck, but that's exactly why when you go ahead and do them anyway, you've tackled that first difficult task of your day. You've built that momentum. So when it comes to those other difficult tasks related to your diet or your work, you feel much more prepared. However, I must say over time, over this 30 day period, I found the strength of this effect tended to diminish a little bit. Because in the first week, cold showers were really painful and it was really a mental barrier to get over. But by the time I reached day 25, day 28, they felt very routine and a lot easier to take. Benefit number three, cold showers can help you to burn more fat. Yes, I'm not joking. Instead of busting your ass on the treadmill, you could be busting your ass in the shower. Research has shown that cold exposure in humans can increase the rate of fat burning. Six young healthy males had their skin temperature reduced by four degrees Celsius. They wore suits through which 18 degrees Celsius water was pumped. This temperature, they found, was the best at reducing the skin temperature of the participants while minimizing shivering. What they found was that the activation of brown adipose tissue, also known as brown fat, in the cold was not only associated with increased blood flow, but that it was also associated with a higher metabolism in the tissue i.e. the burning of fat. However, the study is yet to prove that this is actually a viable method to burn fat over the long term. In other words, is taking a shower every morning really gonna have a significant impact on your weight over the long term? In my personal experience with these cold showers, I'm not sure about fat loss as I didn't measure it. Although I did find I was squirming around and making a lot of noise in that shower as soon as I felt the cold water. So maybe that could help. Plus I think the momentum I spoke about earlier and the discipline that you can build from cold showers could help you stick to workout routines or diets, which could indirectly help you to lose fat, even if it's not linked to the cold water itself. Benefit number five, cold showers may boost your immune response and have anti-cancer properties. Now this is all to do with the way your blood composition changes when put under cold stress. The following study looked at 15 healthy subjects, 13 males and two females. They were recruited to participate in a 150 meter long swimming race in cold water. We're talking six degrees Celsius. Blood samples were collected the day before and immediately after the race and the composition of their blood was evaluated. What was found the day after the race was that red blood cell count had increased by 4.7%, white blood cell count had increased by 40.6%, and the platelet count had increased by 25%. When the researchers looked more closely at this increase in white blood cell count, 
they found a strong increase in the number of neutrophil granulocytes. These types of white blood cell, to provide an oversimplified function, are responsible for ingesting, killing and digesting microbial pathogens. Okay, cool, that's great, interesting, but does that actually have any relevance to us? Is this actually gonna help prevent disease? And does it work if I take a shower every morning? Callum, you must be mad if you think I'm gonna swim 150 meters every morning in the local freezing lake. Benefit number six of taking cold showers. From my personal experience, my cold showers were never longer than about two minutes max. Potentially my longest one was five minutes, whereas the hot showers were consistently more towards 10 minutes because it's comfortable. And in terms of energy bills, speaks for itself. So let's look at some of the cons of a cold shower. Well, I mean, the first and most obvious one is, it's cold, it sucks. Cold showers suck. They're not particularly pleasant and doing them every morning sucks even more. But at the same time, this is exactly where the biggest benefits lie. The second con of a cold shower is that there's no hard scientific evidence for some of these physiological benefits we've spoken about such as burning more fat, increasing immune response, or reducing sickness days. All the science on these effects just points to a possible connection. These studies often have small sample sizes and are very subjective in their findings. Con number three, many of the mental benefits in terms of discipline, in terms of motivation, in terms of mental resilience, tend to fade over time. Once the cold shower becomes a routine, once it becomes a normal activity, some of these powerful initial mental effects tend to fade slightly. At least that's what I found in my 30 day experience. So what is the final verdict after taking hot showers for 30 days and then taking painful cold showers for 30 days? Hot showers are comfortable, they're pleasant, and they can help increase your overall mood. They help you to cool down and calm down and get a good night's sleep. And they're also a great option when you're feeling sick or under the weather. However, they may affect muscle growth, although the scientific evidence for this is weak. They can also affect your hair health as well as your skin health with conditions such as acne, balding, and other skin and hair conditions being worsened by hot showers. Although it's worth considering that these effects are only found with burning hot showers. And so as long as you keep your shower temperature under 40 degrees Celsius, these effects should not be a problem. Hot showers are perfect for evenings, for weekends, for holidays. I found them great for a time where you just need to relax and unwind. When the pressure's off, cold showers on the other hand, help us to burn fat. They help us to save time and money, to improve our immune response, Apparently they can help us be less sick at work, which can increase performance. And they have all these great mental benefits, such as that momentum and that discipline you get from conquering a cold shower, even though it sucks. However, cold showers are a pain, period. You have to give up the pleasure of a nice hot steamy shower to feel like garbage every morning. Plus, there's no hard evidence to show any of these physiological benefits actually happen with a cold shower as opposed to a cold bath. But if I've learned one thing from taking cold showers for 30 days, it's that the power of cold showers comes from how uncomfortable they are. Cold shower. The mental strength and mindset you build from forcing yourself to cold shower every day can help you build muscle, help you lose fat, increase energy levels, build savings, save time, and improve so many aspects of your life. And it has nothing to do with the cold shower itself. So let me know down below if you're considering changing to a cold shower. And maybe a cold shower might just change you.